Hey guys, it's Tina and I wanted to make you guys another unschooling video today. You are gonna notice that a lot of my unschooling videos have to do with toys as we unbox them or with games the first time we play them and things like that. I do not get paid for any of my videos. I do not try and sell anything in any of my videos. The reason why I actually do tend to make more unschooling videos when I play a game for the first time or when I unbox something for the first time is just because I wanna give you guys an honest, picture of how the children respond to a new learning toy and kind of like how they play with it, you know, without having had me prompt them many, many times before and stuff like that. So the first thing that I wanted to say before we jump into this video is that you will notice that I say I got you guys a new toy and I'm very excited. I don't ever say I got you guys a new math manipulative or I got you guys a new learning toy. In our house, we unschool. We actually gave up using um, curriculum books and school books probably like six or seven months ago when I realized that it just felt like it was putting too much pressure on the kids and it was kind of the opposite of what I wanted to do. I want learning to always be like fun and fresh and exciting and new. I want it to be more about making discoveries and growing as opposed to just something that they have to do because I said so. We do have all of these toys in our homeschool closet but we also have all of our board games and all of our puzzles in our homeschool closet as well as all of our art supplies and our dress up box and so we don't make that much of a distinction between like different kinds of toys in our house. When we are at home we just say I got you a new toy. And the reason why is because even though a lot of people would identify the toys that I use in these videos specifically as learning toys or as manipulatives that you would have used when you were in school, I don't like to put a lot of pressure to learn something on the kids when they're playing with these toys. And the reason why I do that is because I feel like if the kids differentiate between, for instance, Lego and then a learning toy, it puts a lot of pressure on what they should be learning from that toy. And I would just rather that they played with this toy and they made discoveries by themselves as opposed to feeling like there was something that had to be learned from it and being stressed out about that. So that being said, here we go. I'm barely even listening to you say, okay, I'm, st I'm too busy eating your, these cookies. Jolly, we're gonna look at the news. Toy. I'm gonna show you the toy now. Chase, so ah, that's enough. You guys ready to see what we've got? Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Uh, so much ladders. Do you want me to put them on a tray instead, mm -hmm. Lily? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ink. Mom! Ant? Ant? Ant. That's right, ant. You want one of these, Lily? So the first thing that you're gonna notice is that I play too, and I almost always play too when the kids are playing games. If I am sitting with the kids and playing with the toys and making my own discoveries, it kind of gives them the idea that like, this is something that's good to do and fun to do, and it's probably something that they should learn how to do without necessarily telling them that they have to learn it. Ooh. Letter I. B L O C K. What sound is O C K? Oak. Oak. Oh. And what sound is BL? Wait, I'm just I'm just busy finding words like Do. No, B B. Bull. That's right. So bull. Block. Spells. Block. Block. That's right. I made the word block. E E E. And how do you spell ink? Don't get the pieces. Like this? Don't get that T. You look like a starving artist. The hair and the glasses. This is nuts. And Stop. where's the and where's the and where's the and? Do, and I, do I look better like this, Joe? Yeah. What'd you spell? What does it say? Eat. E E T. That's, that's really close. Except E in the eat word is E A. The A James. The A. There. C E A. A. N. Oh, are you trying to spell ink? Yeah. So I cut out some of it, but you'll notice here that Joe is trying to actually copy using individual letter cubes, the sound cube ink. So instead of spelling out a word with the sound ink in it, he wants to literally write I-N-K with different letters, which is a useful activity and would be a lot more useful if he was younger or something like that. And so what I am gonna try and do in the next clip is I am going to try and direct his play into using the cubes in what I think is a more useful way based on like the knowledge that he already has. I do want you guys to know that if you do try and do this and your kid doesn't respond to it and they still wanna play with the toy the other way, just let them. And that's exactly what I would have done because all playing is learning and all learning is good. It doesn't matter if it's what you do 
deem as something that is not hugely important at the time or is hugely important at the time. I just, I do tend to direct the kids a little bit, but I'm not going to push it if they don't go in that direction. What word ends with the sound ink? And it's a color and you're wearing it. Pink. Pink. So what would you have to put on the front of ink to make pink? Well, they all have stars there. Pink. Pink. That's right. You're, oh, well, kind of. You got, it says ink p. There you go. That's better. <laughs> what about if you put an R at the beginning of ink? Rink. Rink. That's right. That would be a chord. Here. No, not in your mouth. Wink. Not in your mouth. Ink. I really like these. Ooh, this says off. Off. I'm gonna spell something. So as you'll notice here, I am playing again and I am trying to drum up some interest in some new ways to use the toy. As I told you guys before, I do like to play with the toys and I think that by myself playing with the toys, it does encourage the kids to maybe learn from them the way that I'm learning from them, stuff like that. Every once in a while, if the kids are having an off day where they you know, are really sluggish and like can't really come up with activities to do on their own or something like that, I will personally take a toy out sit at the table and just start playing with it myself. And usually all three kids will end up joining me without me having to prompt them or say anything at all. Well, I should be playing that too if mommy's playing with that. Um, every once in a while though, it doesn't work. And then I just end up sitting at the table for like 20 minutes by myself playing with a child's toy. So um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is a good way to start the play. It's a good invitation to play, but it doesn't always work. And then you're just playing by yourself. Is there a st sound? St. Mom? S-T. S-T. I'm Ooh, grr. Gruff. No, did I? What's a gruff? Gruff is kind of like when someone talks really short with you, like when you're like, Mommy, I want a drink, and I'm like really tired in the morning, and I'm like, just a minute. That's gruff. <laughs> I need a G-R. Uh, grr. So like you could spell pink, rink, blink, sink, oh. dink, <laughs> or look, oat. You know words that end with oat. Lily, my goodness. G. Take that out of your mouth, please. G. G. Lily! Stop. So I am leaving something in here and it's just a couple of little clips of Lily being fussy and stuff like that in the background. I usually try and edit a lot of this stuff out, but I do wanna paint a picture of reality here that things don't always go 100% according to plan. I don't wanna give everyone the idea that homeschooling is always easy or unschooling is always easy, but I will say, that it is always worth it. <laughs> this being said, a lot of people have asked me because I am expecting a baby in two months if I still will be homeschooling or unschooling with the new baby. I will, this is just life. Learning is life and this is just how it is in our house. Thank you. Why? you know, I don't want it in your mouth. I need a pee, I need a pee. Oh, the letter's washing. That's right, coat. Oh, one of the letters is kind of yucky, eh? No, you're not gonna scream. Do not put that in your mouth. I can't keep taking stuff out of your mouth. I don't want stuff in your mouth. B. 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 Boat. Boat. That's right. You made the word boat. I need to pee. Now Lily's gonna freak out because she's not allowed to put toys in her mouth. You need a P? Oh wait, no, that's a D. Is that a P? Yep, that's a P. Grumpy? Okay, the only thing is, is that grumpy ends with, the, it's a Y that makes the E sound, not an E-A. So if you put a Y, it'll say grumpy. Except that better be about daddy and not about me. Why, 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 why? What's that spell? Grumpy. What does it spell? Grumpy. grumpy. That's right. Hey, I'm not grumpy, you're grumpy. 
Actually, just daddy's grumpy. So as I mentioned in my last video, I do ask a lot of questions while my kids are playing in order to kind of like make them think of different ways to use manipulatives. Not all questions do have to be answered though. So if you are playing something with your child, especially for the first time, you don't need to put a lot of pressure on them. Even if it seems that a child has ignored your question, they have heard your question and they most likely will think about it. If not right in the moment, then in the future at some point. I need Jay, you. I have a question. When you have a vowel consonant E, what does the vowel do? When you have a vowel consonant E. I don't need that. I don't want to read that right now. I just you. need you. Okay. I need you, 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 you. What did you In a minute sound, we'll have please? a bath, okay? Oh fun? dear. Yeah. Fun, yeah. Okay, oh. The vowels, they're all on red ones. So A, E, what are the vowels? A, E, I, E. That's right. So all those are on the red ones, and all the consonants, the consonants are not vowels, they're on the blue ones. Blue ones. Except there's some E's, which are vowels, those are on white because they, you can use it to make a silent E. So it should be easier to find them, you just have to look at all the blue ones. I thought I already gave you one though, is it not in your hand? It's in your hand, but... I need another one. You can't have another one. There's not another one. I need two ones. Okay, well then listen. Let's find the ump sound so that you don't have to have um, all written in different letters. Grumpy. See, um, so now you can yeah. change the word grumpy yeah. for that. What do you want to spell, Joe? Grumpy. James already has all the letters for grumpy. Let's spell something else. How about popcorn? See, look, um, you can change out the um, watch. You want to spell popcorn? Yeah, popcorn. Okay, so I saw orn over here, see so orn. How would you spell pop? P O P. Okay. We need a U. I believe. What word is it? I don't remember what word it is. So you guys are gonna notice for a little bit that here Joe keeps getting a little bit lost on which side of the cube he's using. For the sound cubes, all four sides have different sounds on them. So I think the ink one says ink and ing and onk and stuff like that. And instead of just always giving him the answer, I'm telling him that he needs to read it and sound it out himself. If your child does tend to get like really, really frustrated, then I would say go for it and give them the answer because there's no reason to let play turn into a negative thing. You always want it to be positive. In this case though, Joe is just asking a question and I do feel that I can keep on pushing him to read the word himself. And so you're gonna see that I do not give him the answer at any point. What's at the end of popcorn? Pop. No, at the end. I need a U, I need a U, I need a U. Corn. 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 You're a jerk, Jay. Grumpy <laughs> mom. Thanks, Jay. So where does that go? Well, where does it say orn? Look Where's around the at the cube. Which one says orn? Orn. Orn. Good. So put corn on it. Put a C on it. What are you doing, Lily? All right, let's find an off sound. So. Do I roll something for you? Up and down, up and down. I don't like crunching. Can I roll? What? Rumpy poop. I took the poop off. So we need the purple word P O, and then we need P. There's a P. I need an N. I put the P near the C. So Before. what do we need still? Lily, Lily, you are so irritating right now. I don't even know. Lily. She's screaming. Do you want to move popcorn? Joe. Mom, too much. Too much, guys. Too much. Mom, H O U S C. H O U S C spells house. You have chocolate on your face. I am a popa. Robbie Sun. Jaybird, this doesn't say grumpy son, this says fruffy son. Where's the word grumpy? Grumpy! That's better. Oh, there, op. 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 Now how can you use that to spell popcorn? That says op. Pay attention to what you're doing, okay? Jay, Jay, 
It's too much now, you're being disruptive. So one of the things that I do wanna delve into fully in another video, but I am gonna give you a couple of little snippets of it here, is the fact that James does have ADHD, and this is something we've known about probably since he was around a year old, though he didn't get diagnosed until about a year and a half ago. The fact that he has ADHD and the fact that he learns differently to other kids is one of the reasons why I'm so grateful that we can financially afford to homeschool. James does have these periods where he is very, very silly, very, very loud, very disruptive. James, 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 you're being really disruptive now. Sorry. Where he is more interested in being entertaining to other people and being obnoxious and stuff like that instead of learning. And as you can see, in a little bit, he is going to excuse himself from the table and find something else to do. And then he is gonna go back a couple of hours later when he's on his own and he's gonna try and play with the toy again. This is something that is amazing for him and he has afforded this reality by being unschooled. But definitely one of the reasons why I was so fearful to send James to school when he was four years old is because when I looked at how disruptive he was and how scattered he was sometimes and how difficult it was for him to sit still for even moments just to enjoy a snack or a meal or something like that, I said to myself, this is going to be way too hard for him in a classroom setting. I love him. He's my child and I love him to death. And I still get so frustrated by how scattered and how disruptive he is. So I can't imagine sending him into a school setting where a teacher is having to deal with 29 other children and he is acting this way. And so like I said, I will get into this more in depth in another video, but I did want to include a couple of snippets to kind of show you that it doesn't always go 100% according to plan. Think really hard about what you're doing and sound it out, okay? Look at what you've got, sound it out. You just need so what does yours say now, Joe? Oh. Oh. It says opcorn, that's right, but what did you want it to say? Popcorn. Okay, so what do you have to do with the peas? Uh, also we have to add them to this side and that to this side. No, you have to, look at, look at what you've got. You've got op, puh, corn. Really? Are you making a little tower here? Can you make one for me? No, you can do it, my love. My love. Good job, Joe. You did it. So as you guys can see here, I have identified the difference between James just kind of like being silly but still learning and him actually just commanding all the attention and being really obnoxious and not really learning anything at all, which is why this video has become very Joe-focused and why this whole like learning session here and this play session has become very Joe focused. How about let's spell eat? Eat, let's, okay. And then let's go at the end of this like I'm eating my popcorn. So the sound ing, mm -hmm. I can see it here. It's on one of the yellow ones and it says ing. Ing. Can you find ing. it? Ing. 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 You got it. Okay, so you want to spell eating popcorn. See me, me, me. You want to see you? I'll add this on this side. So now what do we want at the front of ing? Eat. Eat in the t. Right, but the sound e in eating is actually e a. Okay, so e a. Eat ing. What are you missing? A t. Is T a vowel or a consonant? Can triggered. Okay. <sighs> so here the sillies have rubbed off on Joe, and I am done. So it goes right here. E, T, A. So now we put this together. I just put it like that. E, eat pop, I mean, popcorn eat. <laughs> but you want it to say eating popcorn. There you go, that's better. Eating popcorn! That's right! Like, I am eating popcorn! Hum, hum, hum. Okay, mommy is about done. Oh. You can still play. Say bye to everyone! Bye! 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 bye. So, like I was saying for the whole video, every once in a while, James does need kind of his alone time to learn when he doesn't have anyone else to play with or to entertain or anything like that. And so, a couple of hours after I made this video, James is actually watching TV and he pulled out the blocks and he sat on the gymnastics mat with them. Oh my God, our house sounds so crazy. He was watching TV and he had the blocks on the gymnastics mat. But anyways, he was doing all that stuff 
and while watching TV he actually composed this really long sentence which he was really proud of himself for. What's your whole sentence from the beginning, Jay? Eat. Daddy, you want to do this? Look. Mm. Look, Daddy, look. One sec, Joy. Two. How am I not walking? Eight. Look, Daddy, look. You got it. What does it say? Food to make you strong. That's right. Good job. As I said, unschooling, it's not homeschooling, it's not school schooling. It is just freedom to play and explore and come back when you feel like it and learn when you feel like it. And so I am so grateful for having this opportunity to provide this for my children and also to watch them thrive in this environment. And I am really, really grateful for the fact that instead of James having been in a classroom today and struggling to keep his emotions and keep his silliness and keep his um, obnoxiousness in check, instead he kind of just got to wander off and do his own thing and come back when he felt that it was the right time and explore the toy on his own at that point. So that is one of the reasons why I really, really love homeschooling. And that's actually one of the reasons why we started homeschooling which like I said I will delve into in another video but I do definitely think that if you guys have the opportunity to especially when you're dealing with a child who learns differently than other children and behaves differently than other children it is just so so amazing to be able to let them do things in their own rate and at their own pace so anyways that's all I'm gonna say for today I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as usual if you have any questions feel free to comment below bye